I understand now you are attracted to greatness because greatness is all in you. But it's easier to watch greatness. It's easier to go see greatness than it is to put in the time, to put in the energy, to, to discipline yourself, to sacrifice. It's easier. And so that's why you average. You've been doing the same thing. You at the same job. You experiencing the same things in your life. Nothing has changed. Everything about you is phenomenal, but you've consciously made a decision to be average. You are average in school. You are average at your workplace. Like everything you do is average, and not because it's average, but because you made a decision. You made a choice to be average. Why? Because the people around you are average. Or maybe you grew up in an average environment, or went to an average school, or you work for an average company, and so you've decided. You've decided to go against who you are. an extraordinary call of life. What would a magnificent life be? It's not for me to define. It's for you to define on your terms. To me, an extraordinary life is life on your terms. What would it look like if you really, truly, without bullshit, without exaggeration, could look yourself in the mirror and say, holy shit, look what I created. Most of things that happen in life, you have no control over. You don't control your parents, where you're born, when you were born, what era, really what schools you go to, or anything like that. And then beyond that, just things happen to you. And, and so the way I look at it, maybe 95, 96% of what happens in life, you have no control over. But you have a little margin of control. And power is the ability to increase that tiny little margin to four, five, six percent. The, the gist of it is controlling yourself, self-mastery. Power begins from within. If you're going to get anything out of life, you've got to throw your whole self at it. You know, you've got to throw your whole self at it. You can't go through life with a maybe attitude and expect to get anywhere. Right? You can't go through life and say, well, oh, maybe this is going to work out for me. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You've got to have some, something about you that says must. You've got to have a must attitude. A lot of people right now going after their dreams, wondering why they're not getting in red. Wondering why they're not moving forward. Because you're going through life with your brakes on. The only way you're going to get results in your life to achieve your goals, your dreams, your desires is through taking massive action. Take action, take action, take action. That should be your mantra in your head. All day, all throughout the day, all throughout the week, all throughout the month. You do that, you take massive, massive action, and see what's gonna happen in your life. Your life's gonna change. You can make the commitment to your life that you don't like the results that you have and that you're gonna do something about it. See, that power is available to all of us. Today, I begin a new life. Today I shed my old skin, which had too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. Today I am born anew, and my birthplace is a vineyard where there is fruit for all. To, you know, to create a business, you've got to initially work day and night, weekends. It's really hard work. To do everything you can um, to to, you know, to survive and not to give up. Um, you know, as long as you try everything you can, uh, then if you fail, um, you'll, sleep, you'll sleep okay. The most important decision of your life is deciding whether you're truly committed to being happy no matter what. Because life is gonna throw all kinds of curveballs at all of us. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness, and if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. See, the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied. Don't get caught up in, well, I've tried it four or five times and things didn't work out. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. There's something in you that said, there's a bigger life waiting for me, calling my name. There's something in you that says, I'm on my way to a greater life. Entire life changes in a moment. You get that, say I. Problems are what make us grow. Authenticity will lead to a rich life. Life is always happening for us, not to us. Yeah. 
and don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. First of all, you were born a human. Right. Let's start with like, we could have been fucking ladybugs. Right. Do you know the math around becoming a human? The math is insane. It is through the disaster, it is through the adversity that our strength is developed. If everything went the way you wanted it to go, you wouldn't have anything to exercise by. It's a, it's a gymnasium of life where you get the workout, the resistance, you find out things about yourself that you didn't know. The biggest poison in us is regret. One fucking life. One life, my friends. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will. To feel alive, I have to always feel like we're growing. When people ask me, what does it take to be happy? I always tell them one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Even if you're not where you want to be yet, if you're on the road, if you're improving, if you're making progress, you're going to love it. You're going to feel alive. On the other hand, it doesn't matter how successful you are, if you stop growing, you start dying inside. If the formula for happiness is to be able to meet your expectations or exceed them, that really makes you excited, but to be happy, you got to at least meet it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you generally are meeting what you expect you want from your life in that area, you feel good. Life conditions match blueprint, feel good. What are you doing now? You're still here breathing. That means you've got some more to give. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter about where you are, doesn't matter about what you have, doesn't matter about what you've done. Life is about growing, it's about being productive, it's about stretching, it's about challenging yourself. So you start looking around and decide, hey, hey, wh what else do I want to do? What, what got me here? It's a time for celebration, but also a time for reflection. What got me here? What worked? What did not work? What do I need to do to repeat so that I can get the same kind of results in other areas of my life? If the goal is to improve my health, if the goal is to improve my relationship, if the goal is to improve my income, if the goal is to improve something in society, what is it I need to do? None of us do anything by ourselves. Develop an appreciation for external support as well as good fortune because all of those things play a role. Now, what are some of the elements or the characteristics or the qualities of people who are fulfilled, who, who live a life of fulfillment? What are some of the things we can look at about them? Number one, make your mind fertile ground for the seeds of opportunity. Think if you want to experience a sense of fulfillment, you've got to have an open mind so that ideas can come in there and take root and grow. So you want to begin to look at life and have a sense of curiosity. You want to keep learning, keep growing. Realize that we have a theme. You never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. Our whole lives are guided moment to moment by the state we're in. Learning how to change your state, not bullshit, not fake, but to go from pissed off, frustrated, freaked out, to back in your center, or creative, or uh, determined or something that's going to move you forward. It's going to create a better quality of life for you and others. That's a critical skill set. So moment to moment, our life's controlled by our states. Yep. You know, if you're in an angry state, you're going to respond differently than if you're feeling playful. But what controls those states long term is your model of the world. Everyone has different goals and dreams and desires. But as I traveled around the world to 100 countries, I started going, holy shit, I'm seeing the same problems. What's underneath it? I began to see that there are these same six human needs that we all have, the same needs. We all have a need for certainty, that we can avoid pain and we can have some pleasure, some comfort. We all need uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We need variety or we feel dead inside. If you're totally certain, you're bored. If you have total variety, you're like freak out. And it's not a balance. It's learning which of these you need more as a person. Everyone's developed a different set of values in that area. Um, need of, the need for significance, to feel unique, special, important, the need to feel loved, the need to grow, and the need to contribute. Some people value certainty at the top of their list. That's their center of their target. I don't want to do anything unless I know it's going to work. I don't want to do anything unless it's the same. If you change anything, they freak out. If you're driven by love first, 
You want certainty too, but love is higher. You're going to behave very differently than if you're driven by significance. I have to be the one. The two that most people have, 90% of the planet, if you said, of all these needs, which one do you really focus on most day to day? Everybody wants love, but what do you focus on? Most people focus on being significant. We live in a Facebook world where people fake their life, put new filters, make it look different than it really is, tell stories that you know are totally full of it to make themselves look good. Because we live in this kind of false world where significance is more important than love. Right. And it separates us. And you will move in the direction of the people that you associate with. So I, it's important to associate with people that are better than yourself. You really, you want to associate with people who are the kind of person you'd like to be. You, you'll move in that direction. The friends you have, uh, they will form you as you go through life. And... Uh, uh, make some good friends, keep them for the rest of your life, but have them be people that you admire as well as like. Bill, you'd add to that? Yeah, some friends do bring out the best in you. Uh, and, and so those, it's good to invest in those friendships. Uh, and, you know, some friends challenge you uh, about things you're doing. Uh, and that, you know, that level of intimacy is great. I wouldn't say that I'm, you know, I was so obsessed with work. I didn't invest, I'd say, in my 20s and 30s as much as I should have. It's really through Melinda and seeing, you know, other people. I realized, okay, that is, uh, you know, it's really worth the investment to have those people as uh, you're always there to help them and, and vice versa. Remember, the mind controls a body. The body does not control the mind. What makes these guys special and successful in everything they do is not their physical gifts, it's their mental toughness. Things are just happening, and it's because of one choice, and that's it. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking you've made all these different choices and your life is in one direction, make one different choice. Just one, and see what it does. The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never gonna end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. I would follow my passion. I mean, whatever turned you on, you know, I, uh, uh, I found, I was lucky, I found something early that, that turned me on. But you don't wanna take a job just for the money. You don't want to take a job for an organization that you really don't feel good about or work for people that you don't feel good about. You, you really want to be excited when you get out of bed every morning. Follow your passion. Do something you're very passionate about and don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. You gotta know what you're good at, you gotta know what you're marginal at, and you gotta know what you suck at. And you've gotta find people who complement your skills. You know, and you gotta know what type of thinker you are, what, you gotta know how you work, you know? And once you start to understand who you are, then you can start finding places where you'll be successful and you won't be, you won't be lying to yourself. You can have any habits you want to be. You can be, you can be lazy, you can be prompt, you can be, you can be, late you can be honest you can cut corners i mean you have all these choices and those are choices for you to make nobody else is going to make them for you and i would suggest that you play this little game with me too uh think about the person you would most like to be in life so maybe it's one of your contemporaries maybe it's somebody a little older but pick out the person you admire the most the person that you'd change places with if you could and then write down why you admire them just put it on a piece of paper and then figure out the person that you would least like to change places with you, who really turns you off, who you find repulsive. And list the reasons why that person turns you off so much. And then look at that list. And you'll find that everything on the left-hand side, what you admire in other people, the qualities they bring to life, you'll find those are things you can do yourself. It's very simple. You gotta apply yourself, but the habits you form in doing that early on will carry you through life. If you do that, two or three years from now, if you go through the same exercise, you'll find out that the person you admire the most is yourself. 
You have to act on your passion. You have to act on your inner drive. Don't let those feelings stay inside of you. You got to know what to do with them. You got to know how to make them work in order to get what you want. Don't keep it inside. Decide, commit, act, succeed, repeat. Good, great, unstoppable. Every team, every work atmosphere, no matter what you do, must consist of those three personalities. If you have those three personalities and you can identify the individuals that have those three personalities, you're guaranteed success in whatever you do. It is not the things we do in life that we regret on our deathbed. It is the things we do not. Because I assure you, I've done a lot of really stupid things and none of them bother me. All the mistakes and all the dopey things and all the times I was embarrassed, they don't matter. Last August, I was told that in all likelihood, I had, I had three to six months left to live. Somebody said to me, in light of those numbers, wow, so you're really beating the Grim Reaper. We don't beat the Reaper by living longer. We beat the Reaper by living well and living fully. For the Reaper will come for all of us. The question is, what do we do between the time we're born and the time he shows up? Because when he shows up, it's too late to do all the things that you're always going to kind of get around to. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. And since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. And you will need to find your passion. Many of you have already done it, many of you will later, many of you may take till your 30s or 40s, but don't give up on finding it, right? Because then all you're doing is waiting for the reaper. As a child, my parents always told me, you could be whatever you wanna be, you could do whatever you wanna do. But I didn't totally believe it. Yet I went out in the world and I carried myself and I held my head high and I stood there and I looked people in their eyes and I talked to people as if I was deserving of everything that this planet has to offer. I really want to say to, to children out there and to, to people who are watching, Confucius said one time, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. And I want you to keep in your heart, just know that you can. Know that you can. And it is going to get hard, and you're going to want to quit sometimes, but it'll be colored by who you are and more who you want to be. I definitely found that uh, wanting to be an actor stems from wanting to be somebody. I said, I'm not losing. I'm still here, I'm fighting, I'm not losing. When you die, it does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. Find your passion and follow it. You will not find that passion in things. And you will not find that passion in money. Because the more things and the more money you have, the more you will just look around and use that as the metric, and there will always be someone with more. I want the world to be better because I was here. If 
you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. You know, like the, the, your life will become better by making other lives better. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. Why would you be realistic? What's the point of being realistic? 